Hey guys, SpaceGuru5 here. This time, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to be looking at the events leading up to World War I and providing my analysis of them. Why World War I? Well, at the time I'm recording this, it's been six days since the centennial anniversary of the armistice that ended the war. I figured I might as well talk about what caused that war to begin with. Now, I know that some will find this controversial, but much of this knowledge was taken from Wikipedia. However, these are largely substantiated accounts, and they're all backed up with reliable sources, so I think it's acceptable to take this risk for once. That said, let's get on with the presentation. On the stream where I dream here of you, my pretty Indian maid. As crazy as it might sound, the events that directly caused World War I can be traced back to nearly 40 years before the fighting even began, and it all starts with the Russo Turkish War of 1877 through 78. This war proved the weakening strength of the Ottoman Empire throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, when the Russians, Serbs, Romanians, Montenegrins, and Bulgarians overwhelmed the Turks. This had happened due to the rise of Balkan nationalism during the 19th century that led to mass rebellion. Russia gained several Caucasian provinces, while Romania, Serbia, and Montenegro declared independence from the Ottoman Empire. The Congress of Berlin also allowed Austria to occupy Bosnia and Herzegovina, which would set the stage for the Bosnian crisis a few decades later, while the UK could occupy Cyprus. The results of this war led Italy to start longing for territory in Libya, which was an Ottoman territory at the time, though these desires were implicit for a few decades. Germany and Austria formed the Dual Alliance in 1879. It became the Triple Alliance upon Italy joining them in 1882. In 1894, France and Russia began an alliance due to an increase in German power during those times, and because of increased contradictions in their relations with Germany. This would become the Triple Entente when the UK and France began their Entente Cordiale in 1904, and when the UK and Russia began an alliance in 1907. In 1887, Italy had a secret agreement with the UK in which the Italians would support the UK in Egypt, while the UK would support the Italians in Libya. In 1902, Italy had a similar agreement with France over Tripolitania and Morocco, ending their long competition over northern African territories. This served to loosen Italy's commitment to the Triple Alliance, thus weakening Germany. Following the formation of the Triple Entente in 1907, Russia acknowledged Italy's interest in Tripoli and Cyrenaica in return for Italian support for Russian control of the Bosphorus. However, this went largely unrealized. Nevertheless, this would foreshadow Italy's separation from the Triple Alliance and its ultimate alliance with the Triple Entente in 1915. In 1898, Germany decided to build a large navy to more easily coerce the UK into caving to diplomatic needs. Their 1908 naval bill led the UK to enter the arms race. It took a toll on German finances to the point where they wound up abandoning the race in 1912, so they could focus on their feud with France. Then the Venezuelan crisis of 1902 and 03 happened. The UK, Germany, and Italy imposed a naval blockade of Venezuela because of its refusal to pay debts owed from the Venezuelan Civil War, which happened from 1859 to 1863. Venezuela had hoped the U.S.'s Monroe Doctrine would prevent this sort of intervention, although the U.S. felt the Monroe Doctrine concerned seizure of territory rather than intervention per se, and so they allowed the blockade to happen. The Venezuelan Navy was quickly disabled. Not willing to back down, Venezuela decided to submit some claims to international arbitration. Germany objected to this, feeling that some claims should be accepted by Venezuela without such arbitration. However, the U.S. threatened war with Germany if the Germans landed in Venezuela, which forced the nations to make a compromise. The compromise led to the blockade being lifted and Venezuela committing 30% of its customs duties to settling claims. Following the permanent court of arbitration's preferential treatment to the blockading nations, the U.S. developed the Roosevelt Corollary to prevent further European intervention in the economic affairs of the Caribbean and Central America. Yeah, the Venezuelan crisis was just a fantastic mess. The Entente Cordiale between the UK and France was bad news for Germany, which had long relied on the ages-old conflict between the two nations. This would be a motive for them causing the First Moroccan Crisis of 1905 and the Second Moroccan Crisis of 1911, both meant to test the strength of the Entente. 
Spoiler alert, the Entente proved to be much stronger than Germany thought, and in fact, these crises would end up strengthening the alliance instead of breaking it apart. The Russo-Japanese War resulted in the Japanese gaining more power over East Asia, which set the stage for their invasion of Korea in 1910. Neither the UK nor France got involved in this because Russia was allied with France, while Japan was allied with the UK, and of course, the two nations were also allies. And then we get to the first Moroccan crisis of 1905. To make a long story short, Germany decided to challenge French power over Morocco and threatened war if France didn't agree to a conference of accountability. However, during said conference, the only nation aside with Germany was its ally Austria. This forced the embarrassed Germany to agree to a face-saving compromise that assured France's control over Morocco. This had the effect of further souring relationships between the Entente and the Triple Alliance. The Anglo-Russian Convention of 1907 delineated spheres of influence in Persia, stipulated that neither country would interfere in Tibetan affairs, and recognized the UK's influence over Afghanistan. This solidarity brought the Triple Entente into existence. Finally. Then the Bosnian crisis happened. If you thought the Venezuelan crisis was ugly, you should see the Bosnian crisis. It began in October 1908 when Austria annexed Bosnia and Herzegovina, literally days after Bulgaria declared independence from the Ottoman Empire. Both of these actions were seen as violations of the Treaty of Berlin, remember that, and Serbia threatened military action against Austria. Mass boycotts ensued that spelled huge financial losses for Austria, forcing them to reach a settlement with the Ottomans. However, the issue with Bulgaria was unresolved. When a conference to discuss the matter was opposed and diplomatically scuttled, the powers reached agreements on amending the Treaty of Berlin through consultations between capitals. When Russian Foreign Minister Alexander Izvolsky made anti-Semitic comments about Austro-Hungarian Foreign Minister Alice Arenthal in response to amendments leaving Russia empty-handed, Austria responded by leaking agreements between Russia over involvement in the Balkans. This event embarrassed Russia and soured its relations with Serbia. Austria then coerced Russia to agree to the amended Article 25 by threatening war with Serbia. Meanwhile, the UK refused to agree to the amended article until the Serbian question had been settled in a pacific manner. France followed suit behind the UK. Austria finally managed to convince the UK to agree to the amended Article 25 on the 31st of March of 1909. Austria partially mobilized its armed forces to Serbia, the UK committed as requested, and Serbia formally accepted Austro-Hungarian rule. While this finally ended the Bosnian crisis, this would undoubtedly set the stage for the Italo turkish War, the Balkan Wars, and the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophia by Gavrilo Princip. But we'll get to that. In April 1911, the second Moroccan crisis began. A rebellion broke out against the Moroccan Sultan, who was subsequently besieged in his palace in Fez. France prepared to send troops to quash the rebellion, and Spain helped by sending its own troops. On July 1st, the German gunboat SMS Panther arrived at the port of Agadir, and a few days later the SMS Berlin replaced it. This was done under the pretext of protecting German trade interests. France and the UK reacted immediately, recognizing this as German naval interference. The UK tried to stop France from taking these drastic measures, but failed to do so and, due to the Entente Cordiale, was forced not to directly interfere. Instead, seeing that the Panther landed near Gibraltar, the UK sent battleships to Morocco in case war with Germany broke out. This further proved the strength of the Entente Cordiale. During this crisis, Germany's finances took a nosedive, and resulting cash ins for gold resulted in a 20% decrease in Germany's gold reserve in just one month. This would be what caused them to drop out of the arms race, by the way. Despite rumors that the French finance minister caused these hardships, Germany allowed France to control most of Morocco. Resulting peace talks and compromises between the two nations led to France ceding the French Equatorial African colony of Middle Congo to Germany. This gave Germany an outlet on the much coveted Congo River. In return, Germany ceded a small area of territory to the southeast of Fort Lamy, which is now Chad. Upon the signing of the Treaty of Fez in 1912, France had full control of Morocco. As did the first, the second Moroccan crisis brought the UK and France closer as allies and further estranged Anglo-German relations. The UK wound up protecting the northern coast of France in case the Germans decided to launch an attack there, and France would protect the UK in the Mediterranean. Can't wait to see how that turns out. 
As I mentioned before, Italy had long showed interest in Libya since the Russo-Turkish War of 1877. In 1908, Italian nationalist Enrico Corradini called for an invasion of Libya, having seen the events of the Bosnian crisis. These calls were later echoed in the Italian nationalist newspaper L'Idea Nazionale. This led to a wide-scale lobbying campaign for such an invasion, with supporters describing fanciful details of Libyan resources and downplaying the strength of the Ottoman military. Italy had long refused to attack the Ottomans due to its close companionship with Germany. However, these attitudes changed upon the resolution of the Second Moroccan Crisis. The Entente endorsed Italy's decision to invade, using their secret agreements with Italy as leverage. Germany was too busy mediating Roman Constantinople to really do anything, and Austria warned that such a war would lead to Balkan unrest and threaten the integrity of the Ottoman Empire. Italy foresaw these effects as well, but it decided to press on. The Italian Socialist Party, which held a firm grip on Italian public opinion, was divided on the issue, and attempts to convince Italy not to invade were futile. When given an ultimatum during the night of September 26, 1911, the Ottomans proposed a takeover of Libya that wouldn't need to involve warfare. However, Italy refused this until the Italo-Turkish War began. Italy easily defeated the Ottoman Empire, resulting in Italy's annexation of Tripolitania to form Italian Libya. This also had the effect of boosting Balkan nationalism, which was already pretty high. The Austrian annexation of Bosnia in 1908, which preluded the Bosnian crisis, had outraged many Serbian irredentists. In 1911, right before the Balkan Wars began, the Young Bosnian Movement began. It primarily consisted of Serbian, Bosnian, and Croatian students. Their main goals were the creation of a unified Serbian state containing territories important to the Serbs, pan-Serbism, and the creation of Yugoslavia, which would unite the Serbs, Croats, Slovenes, and Bosnians into one nation, Yugoslavism. They were associated with the Black Hand Secret Military Society and Narodna Odbrana, who held similar views. These three groups would eventually conspire to assassinate Austro-Hungarian Archduke Franz Ferdinand due to his planned reforms of transforming Bosnia into parts of Austria-Hungary. The Balkan Wars began in 1912 when the Balkan League, that is Serbia, Montenegro, Bulgaria, and Greece, inspired by the Italo-Turkish War, decided to attack the Ottoman Empire. Like the Italians and Russians before them, the Balkans easily overcame the Ottomans and wound up partitioning the remaining European Ottoman territories. This caused Balkan nationalism to rise to the utmost extreme. Despite all of this, Bulgaria was dissatisfied with the division of Macedonia and thus turned on the remaining Balkans. The Ottoman Empire saw this as an opportunity to regain some of its lost territory and so it decided to join in. In addition, territorial disputes convinced Romania to participate in attacking Bulgaria. Easily defeated, Bulgaria ceded portions of its newly gained territory to Greece, Serbia, Romania, Montenegro, and the Ottomans. This would foreshadow Bulgaria's alliance with the Central Powers in 1915, while Greece, Serbia, Romania, and Montenegro would side with the Allied Powers soon afterwards. I guess the Austrians were right, the Italo-Turkish War did cause Balkan unrest. On June 28, 1914, the height of Balkan nationalism, Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sofia of Hohenberg visited Sarajevo. As they began their motorcade, a few young Bosnia activists were placed to carry out the assassination. The motorcade first passed Vaso Trubilovic and Mohamed Mehmebashic, who both failed to act. Further along the route, Nadejko Chabrinovic set off a bomb intended for the Austro-Hungarian royals, although it wound up detonating under the car behind them, and they began to speed off. Svetko Popovic, Gavrilo Princip, and Trifon Grabesh failed to act as the motorcade passed them at high speed. After the Duke and his wife held a meeting at the town hall, Gavrilo Princip fatally shot them both. He was immediately arrested, as well as the other conspirators. During the resulting July crisis, Austria-Hungary gave an ultimatum to Serbia, which was partially rejected. Austria then declared war on Serbia and began to invade, which provoked the Triple Entente and Triple Alliance into a full-scale war in early August 1914. This war was originally called the Great War and nicknamed the War to End All Wars, although now we refer to it as World War I. The war led to the destruction of all the remaining European empires, the creation of the Soviet Union, the establishment of the Weimar Republic, the Treaty of Versailles that penned all the blame on the Weimar Republic, and the rise of many far-right movements across Europe. This would ultimately set the stage for World War II, but that will have to be saved for later. So there you have it. There's what led to World War I. Hopefully I've given y'all a better grasp of why it happened, and I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. My question for you guys is, could it have been prevented? And if so, how? 
I'd like to know your thoughts. That's about it for today, folks. I'm Space Guru 5, and as always, take care. <laughs>